So one of the recent adventures we went on, we went out on a trail and wanted to go out kind of at dusk, the golden hour, so we could get some good pictures of the view we were uh, after. And I noticed coming back, we were coming back in the dark, and I wished that I had some lights. I'm gonna put on a couple of uh, alley lights or spotlights with uh, an alley light feature. Uh, the boxes have arrived and let's get to it. I went with the uh, rigid D series and these are the SS Pros. And what the SS means is side shooter. Uh, essentially they are driving lights and they've got alley lights uh, on the side three additional leds on each side so there is a right and a left um, or a passenger driver uh, side to these because those lights help light up your i've heard them called like i said ditch lights alley lights that uh, i know them as but it helps uh, light up the side uh, to the side of your vehicle uh, so you can just have a little bit more width when it comes to your a pillar driving lights. So that's what I got. Let's get them open, look at the instructions and get going. I ordered a mount uh, for these lights on the A pillar, but come to find out the 392, because of the taller hood, your standard, the mounts that kind of fit in the hinge bolt from the side, they don't work with the 392 because the 392's hood is about that inch, inch and a half higher and it blocks that hinge bolt. So I opted for these and um, hopefully they'll fit. We'll see how they work. These are the sevens, um, aluminum mounts. These are kind of a gray color and some of the things I've read online is they lose their color really fast. Uh, they're supposed to be black you look next to the black lights, they definitely look more gray than black. And over time in the sun, I've uh, seen uh, the people report that these almost turn a bronze color. So I'll see how they do. They're basically one of the only ones that fit the 392. If they do turn bronze, I'll probably just hit them with a uh, rattle can black over time and uh, blacken them back up. But, I'll get these mounted on now and the lights and at least get the uh, cables through the firewall or through the uh, under the hood and then I'll work on maybe wiring tomorrow depending on how much time this takes today. So with the rigid lights there's not really any specific Jeep uh, instructions that go with them they're just basically universal lights for um, pretty much any vehicle you want. Uh, so they're not Jeep specific for wiring or anything like that, but it comes with your wiring harness, your relay, your fuse, um, plugs for both lights, mounts that go with your brackets, whatever you choose, and then a uh, rocker switch, a, a lit up rocker switch. I am not going to be using the switch, the fuse, or the uh, relay because Jeep Wranglers, if you order it, I guess with it, comes with um, the switches, the auxiliary switches in the cab. And so really all you need to do is hook up your cable to the existing wiring harness, which is under the hood. And the only wires you really need for that are about from here to here. So I'll be cutting it right here and I guess disposing of all of this right here. So that's all I really need to uh, install this onto the Jeep. Get started. Okay, so to throw these brackets on the uh, rigid lights they just slide into these slots right here and you see the holes and it uh, this you can I really think you can mount them either way if you want a lower profile or if you want to uh, 
the instructions show you going kind of with the forward towards the light portion. But they just drop in here. They line up with uh, the holes. Let's see if I can get this lined up. Yeah, just drops in there. And you take your bolt. Looks like it's a five millimeter. You just kind of, you don't have to put a wrench on it or anything. It uh, has a slot that it holds in and then you just kind of tighten down. And that's one side of the bracket. Leave them a little loose for some adjustment. And then the same thing on the other side. I went with these, uh, they call them the side shooters. Uh, this would be the driver's side. The driving uh, lights facing forward and then you've got three uh, LED bright lights that kind of reflect off the side. Driver's side and this would be the passenger side here. You can see them on that side. So they are specific. If you look here, there's no lights compared to here. Um, these are just reflectors, I guess, or whatever, just to kind of give it some uniform look. But um, went with rigid because as far as I can find, they're the only ones that really make these, what they call side lights or alley lights um, in a combination with this. And I didn't want to have a big old Christmas tree up on my A column, you know, forward and then another light going sideways or whatever. I thought this was the best of both worlds. So it doesn't look to me, these look to be exactly the same. Uh, doesn't look to be uh, driver or passenger specific. So I think either way it'll work. But all these do is they drop in these two existing bolts right here. And I think you can mount them either way, inside or out. I'm sure they prefer them out so the logo is on the outside and readable. And that's probably how I will mount them them a little bit more out of the field of view of the A pillar. So pull these off. I have to get this off anyway so we can get the cowl off. I need to get the wiring for the lights uh, through. Um, so we'll work on getting all these uh, four bolts off right now. Okay so for these four bolts, the two on top and the two here on the side of the cowl, you need the T40 uh, Torx bit uh, to get those removed. And then this cowl comes off. Just kind of pull and then lift up a little bit on this area here. And it just slides out of there like that. Okay, now I wanted to test fit this a little bit. That's going to sit in there. And I put the mounting bolt. And the carriage bolt, I want to put the uh, smooth side down. Uh, with the nut uh, up uh, rather than the instructions show it the other way, you know, putting the nut underneath. I just don't want the bolt coming through and getting close to the paint on the cowl. Also, uh, when I'm washing the Jeep, uh, inevitably I'm going to run my knuckles under there, my fingers, and it's going to catch that sharp edge and it'll just rip it, uh, my finger, my skin off. So I'd rather have the soft, smooth underneath and then nut on top. So that's why I'm gonna do it a little different than what the instructions say. But it looks like that'll fit well. Uh, this will sit right up on there. I'll just have to get that mounted and kind of forward or backwards. However, there's uh, obviously the groove in here. You can mount anywhere along there. And then I'm gonna route this cable back, uh, probably around behind this hinge and bring it down through here. All right, I kind of test fitted that. I'm gonna run the cable back behind on the other side, the inside of that hinge. And then I'm gonna bring it down underneath the cowl here. So it'll sit something like that. The cable comes under here. And then I'm gonna open the hood up and I'm gonna get it through here. So the plug, I can't decide if I want the plug on the inside of the hood or back here behind. It probably may actually might leave it back in here somewhere. Um, I'll kinda test fit the wire with the wiring harness, see what I have. Okay, so I, I've routed the plug through this little 
you can move this uh, styrofoam here, or this foam, whatever it is, and there's a little slot right here in that. But I put the plug through that, but it's a little too tight. Um, by the time I mount it on the, the bracket uh, back here, I think that'll be pulling too tight. So I think the plug is going to go under the cowl, and then I'll route the wiring harness uh, under there. So this is the wiring harness it came with, the lights came with. The only thing I need are the two wires that go from the plugs that go to either light, which are right here, these plugs, to this point here. I probably don't even need that much, but I'm gonna cut it here. The rest of this is unneeded. Okay, so I routed the wire from the light behind the hinge here, comes down. Uh, I plugged it into the wiring harness here, the plug. It comes through here, out here, this area. And now I've got to route this wire across and do the same thing on the other side. Uh, I've, I've got to find a route that'll fit that I can uh, tuck in there might take some of these bolts out and kind of tuck it along this line here. Um, but I'll find that route. But before I do that, I'm gonna get this, uh, figure out how to get the zip tied somewhere in here. These are the holes that uh, the bolts screw down, but there's a hole back here. I may zip tie or something in this area here. I can't decide, but I'll figure that out and get that zip tied and secure so it doesn't pull and then uh, Put the bracket on and move to the other side. Okay, so what I did is I used the two holes that were right here in this area and I zip tied the plug itself down and it's on there pretty solid. Get this side buttoned up, then I'll move to the other side. Okay, that cowl just goes uh, right back in, pushes back into place. I'll do the two shorter bolts in the bottom here. And then I'll work on the longer bolts and the mount up on the top. So to drop this in here, it just drops in those two holes. You take your longer bolts, the same bolts that came with it. They drop in there. And I put the bolt in uh, just so I don't have to whip my fingers or try and get the bolt in that tiny gap because there's not a big gap in there to be able to get that bolt up in there without maybe marring the paint. So I put the bolt in first before I put the bracket on. So I'm gonna get this tightened down, get to the next step. Okay, so there I've got it kind of just screwed down a little bit. Uh, you see how high that sits off of the mount. I uh, get the mount bolted in. I can't decide if I wanna bring that lower. I've got plenty of clearance for that nut and that was my concern about going too low. Uh, but you can see that you've got uh, plenty of adjustment. You got side to side, you can rotate it around, and then the mount itself has that slot, coming to focus there, uh, that slot that you can move. Right now, I'm just mounted basically almost right in the middle uh, with the nut. But I think I'm gonna bring that mount down. So I'm gonna pop this off and see how the clearance is uh, spinning that mount around for the light. Okay. There I spun that mount around so and I'll, I can show you it, uh, the brackets now are pointing backwards on the curve instead of forward so it really lowers that and you can see how much that lowered it and I like that better and then the clearance for the nut it took a little bit of getting my finger in there and messing with it you can kind of a little bit of play uh, so don't tighten down those side ones yet uh, but I like that better. I still have got the clearance. I don't have a bolt sticking through to the paint down here. And I think I'll tighten that all down. Tuck those wires back in there. And should be good to go on this side. All right, there it's mounted. Screwed down. Tightened up these side hex nuts in there. 
I canted it out, I don't know if you can tell from that, a little bit away from direct straight down the uh, to the front of the vehicle. I canted it just a little bit, um, hoping that I don't get a lot of splash of light off the hood. I've got the one plugged in, you see maybe through there, through right there, the plug is plugged in up there and the cable comes through uh, here. Um, I need to get it routed down this channel is my plan right here. So I'm going to take off some of these bolts, tuck it in there, put the bolts back. If I need to zip tie it in there somewhere, I will. But uh, I'm going to start over at this end, zip tie it there, and then work my way that way. Okay, there's the driver's side. You can see the wire come through. I got it tucked, kind of followed that path, took off some of these bolts along here, tucked it along this cre crease right here. Again, took off a couple of bolts, tucked it back behind there. And then I got the plug that splits off to the other light up in the cowl here and the rest of the co cable right there that will hook up to the supplied wires for uh, the auxiliary switches which are in the cab. Okay, I went ahead and I rotated uh, the brackets around, switched them around so it's much lower uh, like I did on the other side. The plugs underneath, I'm gonna take off the cowl, these bolts, and uh, we'll get this mounted and plugged in. So what I ended up doing, that'll get in there, is I just ended up zipping, zip tying the plug around this bracket. Okay, now that I've got that zip tied in there, cut off the excess. And then uh, put this cowl back, it's at a weird angle. Same thing on this side. I got the bolt installed first, drop those in there. There we go, finished product, until I get it wired in there. All right, back under the hood here. This is the cable, the wire going up under the cowl here, um, where it's plugged into the light. This is the cable that comes and connects both of the plugs to the uh, lights. Down here on the side, uh, sometimes they're buried pretty far. This one was buried. Are the wires? There's four wires that uh, they're all taped up right now. But these are the wires for the auxiliary switches inside the Jeep. So I'm going to expose these. There's four. There's two that are 40 amp and two that are 15 amp. And I'll expose these and hook. Get the right distance. We'll hook up these cables to power and our ground. Just going to carefully cut through this tape here. You see that there's four wires here. There's two thicker ones, heavier gauge, and that's a kind of a green and a of a brown with a pink stripe and then you've got a blue and an orange and according to the wiring diagram the pink or this reddish color orange red pink whatever you want to call it uh, this one is to uh, auxiliary three 
the two larger ones are aux one and two and then this one uh, the blue one's auxiliary four uh, so i'm going to hook up this to the aux three wire get this exposed a little bit clip it uh, get that uh, attached up so one thing i should point out is the amp draw for these lights so you know that the 15 amp uh, wire is good so i've got the driving and it shows a 5.14 uh, draw it's got the extra leds on the side the two uh, on each or the three on each side um, so you've got a few more leds to fire up so it uh, has a little higher draw uh, with the 15 amp wire uh, the 5.14 should be plenty i shouldn't have any problems all right i exposed the one wire i'm going to use out of that bundle and i just duct or uh, electrical tape that the other three back up uh, future use we'll see if i end up hooking anything else up and i want to make sure this is the again the cable i've got or the uh, wire i've got to connect to Clip it off, make sure I have plenty of room, wiggle room, and then I will strip those down. But let's cut these, expose this one, get these stripped. got one uh, size shrink tube so I hope this works it's not too thick Let's see if I can get this in here feels good nice and tight don't want to punch through the casing there so be careful when you crimp I like to crimp on both sides. The other one in there. Before I shrink this up though, I'm gonna make sure that uh, I've got a good connection and we get the lights to turn on. Put some heat on that in a minute. So let's get this other side. I'm gonna strip that off. An eye connector so I can hook this up to the ground. It's kind of done. Get that shrink wrap on there and let's get it uh, hooked up and see if we've got power and the lights come on. Okay, so I'm going to hook up the ground here uh, just to one of these bolts. All right, got it all hooked up. The ground is here on this uh, bolt here. I've got the uh, power to the wire. It goes back, I'll go inside the Jeep and power it up and see if we get some light. All right, here we are inside. It's kind of a little hazy. Turn it on. know if I'll have to program it or not because usually they're already set up but um, if I do you gotta program it you gotta go into settings you gotta go to auxiliary switches in this case I did auxiliary 3 I hope um, latching power sources ignition recall last state I'm not gonna have it come back on Okay, so I just changed. The only thing on the existing programming that I changed was the recall last state. What that means is once you turn it off, you turn it back on, that switch will stay on um, where you had it. I just, I don't want to do that. Uh, I'll forget that it's on. So it's programmed my AUX3 switch, what's how I want it. And I'll give it a hit. And there you go. You see the lights come on off on both of them are on both of them seem to be functioning 
So I'm gonna go out and get that buttoned up, uh, get those wires zip tied tight, and another successful project done until dark and I get them aimed uh, the correct location. All right, got the wires all tucked in there, zip tied right here, tucked back in there. So the only thing I'm not thrilled about is this wire running over this edge right here. So I may look at putting something around that, maybe a little uh, something to jacket that to protect it going over that sharp edge. Okay, there you go. Got them done. Got them aimed. Set them back a little farther. They look good. So far they're bright at night. Uh, do what I was hoping they would do. Fairly easy project. Took about... Uh, maybe two hours total if I wasn't filming. Um, pretty straightforward. Nothing major, no major obstacles. That's all I've got. Thanks for watching.